Job chapter 10, uh, beginning in the very first verse. Job chapter 10, in the first verse, the Bible says, My soul is weary of life. I will leave my complaint upon myself. I will speak in bitterness of my soul. I will say unto God, Do not condemn me. Shew me therefore, wherefore thou contendest with me. Is it good unto, unto thee that thou shouldest oppress? that thou shouldest despise the work of thine, of thine hands and shine upon the counsel of the wicked? Hast thou eyes of flesh? Or seest thou as man seeth? Are thy days as the days of man? Are thy years as man's days? That thou requirest after mine iniquity and searches after my sin? Thou knowest that I am not wicked, and there is none that can deliver out of thine hand. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me together round about, yet thou doest destroy me. Remember, I beseech thee, that thou hast made me as the clay, and wilt thou bring me into dust again? Hast thou not poured me out as milk and curdled me like cheese? Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh, and thou hast fenced me with bones and sinew. Thou hast granted me life and favor, and thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your dear book. We thank you for the testimony of Job. We thank you for the years that you stood by him. We pray that we would gain wisdom from your word this morning, that you would encourage your church, uh, Lord, that you would uh, sanctify us once again as a people for your holiness, and we'd be faithful to give you the praise for it, for it's in Christ's name that we do pray, amen. Now, uh, maybe some not as familiar uh, portion of the word of God, uh, Job is somewhat a familiar book, but the majority of the messages I've heard is from, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him in the earth. And then Satan's approach to that. But this is Job's response to all the events that occurred and to the friends that came by and tried to encourage him. Now, the title of my message this morning would be, Don't Question God. Amen. Now, if I counted it correctly, God chooses, I mean, Moses chooses to question God six times in his answer to his friends. Now, nine is an answer to his friends, ten is an answer to his friends, and then it goes back. To one of the friends speaking to him. But this portion of that first answer is a continual questioning of God's work and God's will. How many of you, if you would be honest, have questioned God's work? Has questioned the events that he's put in your life? Now remember that the events that have crossed your threshold are one of two things, and they're all natured by God. The first one is they come directly from God to you, and the second one is that he has given the devil some, some ability, some, some, uh, allowed the devil to do some things to you because you've been picked out. Otherwise, nothing happens. The devil is not the creator of things. The devil is not, is not the uh, uh, instigator of the things. The devil is a servant. He's a wicked servant, but he's still beneath God. And you can get that from the first chapter of this book. But I want you to see that somewhere along this horrible way, Job lost sight of that and begins to question God. Now, if each and every one of us would be honest, we've done the same thing. 
There's not one under the sound of my voice. And as this goes out on the internet, including anybody that will ever listen to it, that has not questioned God. And you know what? Why? That's our sin nature. Right. Amen. What did, what did Adam say? Uh, the devil put something out there, and the result was that he questioned God. Uh, Eve said, I mean, uh, uh, the devil said to Eve, you shall not surely die. Yeah. And she questioned what God said from that from the statement the devil gave her. And so we as the Lord's people in the modern day, I believe that our walk in the day that we would that we live in uh, and the enjoyment that we gain from life would be much better if we just quit questioning things around us. Now, in the first verse, Job describes his perception of his condition. Now, I'm not getting down on Job because I don't know that I could have handled it any better or probably not as good as Job did. Just remember as an example of Job, you will experience things like this in your life. Uh, the only prayer that you might can have is that it would not be as bad as Job had it. And so in the first verse, he says, my soul is weary of life, of my, of my life. Now, we don't talk like that here in Tennessee, but it goes more like this. I wish I could just die. Yeah, there you go. Right? And if we haven't verbalized that, we've at least thought it. I just wish I could. And I hear this, and it sometimes seems like a spiritual statement, but yet and still it's questioning God. I wish I could just go on home to be with the Lord. You know when you'll go on home to be with the Lord? When it's your appointed time. Not a minute for, not a minute after. So what that really is ex ex expressing is discontent. That you're not satisfied with the plan that the Almighty has given you. And, and has provided for you and has set you in. My soul is weary uh, of my life. I will leave my complaint upon himself. Uh, excuse me, upon myself. Now, he starts out pretty good and he says, well, I guess the fault is mine. Now, again, and Adam pointed this out in his, in his class several weeks ago. I don't know if you remember it, but it, it left an impression on me that uh, Job may or may not have been an issue. Uh, he, the way that his rebellious adult son was, I think he was concerned about it, but I don't know that it was Job's fault. Uh, you know what? When my boys left home, that's as far as I could take them, Right. And if they come to me and say, Dad, what about this? I'm willing to give my advice, but I'm no longer responsible for them. You see what I'm saying? And if I understand that, it says they were at their eldest brother's house. That sounds like to me they, he'd already moved on and he moved out on him. And so we can't always blame Job with poor parenting. And I think I've done that a lot in my ministry, and I don't know that it's correct. But I want you to see that Job initially takes this on himself and says, it is my fault. Now, that's the modern difficulty when you're having hardship is what did I do? You don't have to question that. You want some peace? Just, just don't ever think, oh, where did I mess up? Uh, because you, again, may or may not have done anything. It may have been at the will of the Almighty alone. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. Now, if you underline in your Bible, underline that, uh, I will speak in the bitterness of my soul, because we all do that, but I don't know that it's a good idea. Uh, when, when you have a bitter soul, you're angry. When you have a bitter soul, there's no contentment. Then when you have a bitter soul, anger possesses you. Have you ever met somebody uh, that just seems to be mad literally all the time? 
Never approached them when they were in a good humor with anyone. Right? We've all known people like that. Well, that's bitterness of that's bitterness of mind. And we better be cautious about going toward the Almighty in that in that frame of reference. And so we see that Job uh, was uh, was about to approach God probably in the wrong spirit. I will say unto God, do not condemn me. Now, who are we to give direction to God? The Bible says we're condemned already, right? Without the intervention of Christ, you know where you're going to be one day? In the very pits of hell. And remember this, he didn't condemn you, you condemned yourself. That's our nature. That's who we are. And, and so we find that, that Job begins this idea somehow that he could, could question what God was doing. And you know what? Every one of us have the same, have the same mind thought at, at one time or the other. And uh, uh, we begin to say, uh, woe is me, and, and look what's happened to me. And so Job begins to question, I will say unto God, do not condemn me, shew me wherefore thou contendest with me. Now can you imagine such a brazen statement that, that he comes out, I want to know, I want you to show me what I did wrong. That's a pretty brazen person, ain't it? Everybody wants to put, uh, pat Job on the back. I don't know if he needs any patting. Right? I want you to show me what I did. You know, you know what? First of all, God don't have to show you nothing. And then uh, because of his goodness, the Bible says we have the full counsel of God right there. You want to know something? Read it. And so Job, at this very difficult, bitter point in his life, and I can't imagine, and again, I, I, I'm not defending Job, but yet at the same time I'm trying not to criticize Job, losing ten children in one day. But, again, he begins to question the Almighty. Is it good unto thee that thou shouldest oppress? Now, what is the first question? He, he, he's making an assumption with the first question. He is assuming that the oppression came from God. Now, we all know, because of the conversation in the great heaven, who is the oppression really coming from? From Satan. Now, God gave him the permission and said, in fact, God came up with the idea. You considered my servant Job? There's nothing like him in the earth. Right. And actually, but I want you to see where was the oppression coming from? It was coming from Satan, right? Again, he had permission to do it, but at the same time, uh, and so I want you to see when you begin to have these events in your life, don't assume they're coming from God. That was a very wrong assumption. Have you ever thought about a doctor treating you for the right, di I mean, the wrong diagnosis? It's the same thing. We, 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 we get the idea somehow that, that, we have, we, we, that we have this authority to even know where things come from. Is it good unto thee that thou shouldest oppress? And one more thing on those few verses. Remember, even if it come from God, God is always good. The worst day in your life, God is good. Amen. And uh, he'll put you in opportunities sometime to witness to people to get you there. It may be a rough trip, but you're there for a reason. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the thing is, a lot of times we don't take up uh, uh, take up on the opportunity because we're so concerned with self that we don't even know why we're there to start with. It, is it good unto thee that thou shouldest oppress, that thou shouldest despise the work of thine hands? In other words, do you despise me? And, and you know what? Uh, this is this is the real answer. And again, Job is, is spiritually messed up right now. 
Yes, he despises everything we do uh, separate and apart from the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says we don't even know how to pray. Right? Yeah. And because of the goodness of the Lord, and we're under the blood of Christ, he honors us. But when did this occur? In the Old Testament, right? Mm -hmm. So did he despise him? Well, I'll say at the very least, he despised Job's sin. Right? And, and so we see, uh, we, we see then that uh, Job is beginning to make these very presumptuous ideas about himself that are in fact wrong. That he is not nearly as good as he thinks he might be. And shine upon the counsel of the wicked? Now, I think what Job is referring to there at the end of verse 3, remember those friends that ran by <laughs> were pretty blunt and sometimes almost mean in what they were saying <coughs> to Job. And so he's identifying as, as wicked, but notice this is the counsel of the wicked. Now, the way they said things and what they did certainly wasn't nice, But some of it was true. You ever, you ever kind of been gouged in the spiritual heart by something, someone you don't even really know say to you? And that's what, that's what Job was saying here. Uh, uh, he says, these people, well, you know what? If, if the Lord God can preach through Balaam's ass, he pretty much can give you a message from anywhere he wants to, right? And, and so he even uh, criticizes the, the origin of what he, was, what he was receiving. That is the spiritual condition that Job found himself in. Has thou eyes of flesh? Now I want you to see that he begins to even question the ability to, for the Lord God Almighty to look on things as they should be looked upon. First of all, no, he doesn't have eyes of flesh, but his eyes are much greater than ours. You ever thought that he could even see your motive when you do something nice he can even see why you did it. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good vision, eh? Yeah. And, and, and so we see then that, that he begins to question God's authority. Hast thou eyes of flesh? Or seest thou as a man seeth? Are, the, are thy days as the days of a man? Now, I believe the question that he answered, uh, asked here, first of all, trying to put time and, and, and days upon the Almighty God of Heaven, but what, he, what I believe he was really saying is the contents of the day. You ever thought about what is the worst day that you've ever lived? And, you know, that's hard for me to get around I've had some pretty rough days. I, and let me say this, not nearly as bad as some. But I've had some pretty difficult days. But I, I don't know that I can pick up one day that was essentially bad. I think the, the worst day I ever had, and I won't say my instructor because Donna gives me the look if I say names from the pulpit. And, but it was one of my nursing instructors at college, and she wasn't my favorite person to start with. And then we had a, 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 a paper due, and me and Donna had moved back to Dover the last semester of my college. I was driving all the way to Martin every day. And, uh, and uh, we got snowed in. And see, I didn't have the university library uh, available to me, so I used what I had, which was mostly textbooks from school. She gave me a 68 on the paper. And why that sounds well, Larry, you'd probably use fortune to get that. I actually used to get very high grades on my papers. And what particularly made me mad about this, that grade would have failed me. There were three grades in that class 
for the whole semester. And so I approached her, I went to the dean of the department, and I said, I will rewrite the paper. I said, I could not get to the library. And so the dean made me go to her, meaning the instructor. And that was a very, very hard day. I mean, when you put literally, I was in my last semester, four and a half years into something, and one paper can throw you out, that's stress. Yeah. And the Lord blessed, and I didn't, I, the 68 stood, but I made 100 on the other two, and it brought me through. Because see, in nursing, passing is not 70. In nursing, passing is 84. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and so we see then, and you know, whose fault was that? I could blame the weather, but who's the master of the wind? <laughs> right? So we've got to be very careful who we blame. And so as Job is, and if you, if you read the text, it's almost like a locomotive. The more Job says, the more he does say. And he's getting more and more angry at the almighty God of heaven. And, and you know, we are all like that sometimes. We get so mad in situations, and I will say the majority of our anger is, to, should, <laughs> is directed at situations, but we want to blame God, Right? And so we see then that Job is, is blaming God, and not only blaming God, he's questioning why God did it. Be very careful of questioning God. Uh, and that's what Job has chosen to do. Verse 7, I mean, sorry, verse 6. That thou inquirest after my iniquity or mine iniquity and searches and, and searches after my sin. So Job was thinking he was so good and he's so great, he can't be examined. You know what? We can be examined anytime uh, that God wants to look at us. If he, and you know what? Examine, well, we'll put it this way. Do you know what? putting you through trial does, it does examine you. It finds out if you're real or if you're not real. Not that God don't know. He knows. He wants you to know. Test how far, how far you will fall in. You will fall into the good and only the good. Are you going to fall into the bad as well? That, 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 that is for you to know. And so we see that Job begins to question God very seriously. And again, I want you to see he's directing it at God and not at the situation, not at the loss of wealth, not at the loss of children. He's questioning God. Verse 7, thou knowest <laughs> I am not wicked. <laughs> you think Job understood the nature of man? Jared hit the nail on the head in his Sunday school class. That is who we are. You know what? <laughs> Am I wicked? Absolutely I'm wicked. Are you wicked? You bet you are. That is the bent and the nature of mankind. That in the very essence is why we, need, we stand in need of salvation. Mm -hmm. We're wicked. Yes, absolutely we're wicked. You know what? Well, you know why we live in the day which we live? You look down the street and you can't tell if you're looking at a man or a woman. Because people are wicked. That's right. That's right. And uh, that's the sum course of it. And you know what? You're wicked too. And I'm wicked, as Mother used to say, as the day is long. That's our nature, right? And, and so we see then uh, that Job's, uh, the emphatic answer to Job's to being from the Almighty, yes, 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 and yes again. <laughs> uh, thou, thou knowest I am not wicked. There, there is none, and there is none that can deliver out of thine hand. At least he understood that. But again, the devil, uh, the devil was doing the 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 
the attack, not God. Verse 8, Thy hands have made me and fashioned me together round about, yet thou doest, yet thou destroy me. You know what? And Jared did this too. You know what? I don't know how I'm going to die. And the reality is you don't know how you're going to die either. Right? But when that destroying day comes, I do know this. It'll be exactly the way God wanted it to be. Right? And I'm not anxious for death. Uh, I have children still to raise, and uh, I want to see my great-grandchildren. But this is the simple truth. If I don't, if I die tomorrow, all I, you know what I can say is I've had a good life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. But we see, just like us, Job was insulted by the thought of dying. When we all know that is a very real, unescapable event if the Lord doesn't come in your lifetime. We will face it. And so Job has got the hummy drummies about <laughs> the first judgment of sin being dead. He is even upset to God about the original sin. Remember, I beseech thee, that thou hast made me as clay, and wilt thou bring me into dust again? Well, amen, and oh yes, you're going back to the dust. Now, I, I think it very, it's very unique, and we understand, I believe it's from the prophet Jeremiah, uh, he said, go down to the potter's house and, and watch them spin the wheel, and, and he makes whatever he wants to uh, upon that wheel, but you know what? It eventually, and, and we know, I think in this one it says that he kind of reformed it once again. Right. But we know, at, what's the thing, if you've ever seen a potter's vessel, uh, they're very porous and usually very thick. But you know what happens eventually? They either get broke or they wear out. The vessels do not last forever. And, and so, uh, two things on that point, and we'll move on. Uh, first of all, what did he make you for? Are you doing it? Now, uh, I know he made me to be a preacher, and I believe he made me to be a nurse, and I'm trying to fulfill bo both of those. But I have found this, you know, we live in a miserable day, do we not? How many people you say, oh, I'm so happy, I love, I'm loving life today. You don't ever hear anybody say that anymore, do you? I think they're in the wrong spot, don't you? If you're not doing what God created you to do, you know what, you are going to be miserable. Right? Because... You're trying to be, you're trying to be a skillet when God made you to be a pitcher. Right? And I've known people that live their life, their entire life that way. Get where God would have you to be. So we find that that most, I mean, excuse me, Job is fussing about how he was made. Thou has poured me out his milk. Now, I, I love this, this portion of this verse. Never, never say that Christ's blood was spilled. It was not spilled. Right. Spilled indicates an accident. Right. That Christ's blood was poured. Right. Just like the blood is poured on the mercy right. seat. And here he says, I'm put out as poured milk. Mm -hmm. That indicates an, an intention, doesn't it? God's in control. He's doing, he's, work. you know, your worst possible event is working for your good. I've often thought about that, uh, this experience with this teacher. And it's amazing I can still remember her name because that was before my brain surgery. But, again, I won't say her name. Uh, she, uh, I found out when I, and 
like I said, I ended up passing the class, got my degree. And I put on, I said, I don't know, because see, the way nursing was then, I couldn't have taken that class in the fall. It would not even have been offered again to the next spring. So I would have been a year behind. And, but when I was growing up, when I, you, you had to see uh, the dean when you were about to graduate, and she was going through all my stuff, and she said, well, Larry, uh, if you take two more classes, you'll have a minor in, in social work. And I said, no, I want my nursing degree, and I'm leaving here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I thought about it a lot since then. If I had to go on that extra year, I would have got a degree in social work, too. See, God has a plan, does he not? Now, I'm glad his plan wasn't for me to have a double degree, but see, something good could have come out, out of that. Our God is in control. Right. And a lot of times we want to take that onto ourselves. And, and, and so we find then that Job is, be, is extremely upset. Thou hast poured me out as milk, and curdled me like cheese. Now, I personally love cheese. Uh, be careful with the cheese you buy in the store. Uh, a lot of it, if you read the if you read the label, says cheese product, whatever that means. I do know this: it's not real cheese. So uh, uh, we have to be careful with that. Now, but real, true cheese, I love it. But there's a lot that goes into making cheese. The milk has to rot. Y'all like the smell of curdled milk? Not real pleasant, is it? But that's a process you must go to if you want cheese. I believe Job came out at, from, from spoiled milk to cheese, don't you? <sighs> Think of all the foods that we eat. Last night, Donna fixed tacos. And, we put cheddar cheese on top of them. They, it, it was just so good. And I was sitting there thinking, I was thinking about the sermon too, eating my taco, and how strange it would, have not, it would have been without cheese. Would it even been a taco? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know it wouldn't have been as good, right? But that process had to happen. A, a difficult process, a smelly process. And we have to go through those food too. Life has a purpose. Events have purposes in our life to accomplish that. So we find that, that Job is still fussing and, and, and describing how desperate his situation is and has fenced me with bones and sinews. Now, I think that's very strange to put there. I'm assuming Job was hurting in his joints, but he says, it's fenced me. To me, that's, he made me. Well, yeah. If you didn't have those, how are you going to move? You know, the arm, the arm is an amazing thing. You can do like this. This is the only rough, This is the only cuff in the Bible that you can do that with. Uh, just e even your toes can crunch. That's a miracle, isn't it? And it's through sinews. We call them tendons today. But that is, that is, it is the very same thing. So he's complaining about how God made him? I believe we do that a lot, don't you? Ladies have been taught in the 21st century they have to look like Twiggy. No, you don't. You know how you have to look? The power of God made you. Right? You know, it's genetically proven that how big you are is based on genetics, not how you eat. That kind of leaves it up to God, does it not? Now, uh, I was very, very thin as a young man, and I wanted to be all buffed up, you know, <laughs> look like everybody else. And uh, we was in morning meeting the other day. I worked with a woman that we were good friends in high school. Her name's Kim. And uh, uh, I had said something about eating too much, and she said, Larry, you were this big. And she held up her pencil when we were in school. Don't fuss. You know, I thought, that's right. What am I fussing about? What am I complaining about? And, and, and so we see that 
Job was complaining about a good thing. You ever thought if you didn't have knees, you'd have to walk like this? Sinews is a good thing, are they not? They're a benefit. They, they make you mobile. We're the most mobile creature. We can, our joints do things that, other, that other, uh, other species don't even have the ability to do. You know what my mama used to say? Larry, a dog's hind leg is always, is always half stretched out. And that's about true. They carry it like this, right? And you know why? Because that's how God made it. Don't fuss how God made you. Be, use it to the glory of God. Use it to his honor. Use it to, that he might be lifted up. Now, verse 12, he says, Thou has granted me life and favor. So I think like in all the Psalms of David, at the end of it, Job comes back to this. You granted me life. And hey, it may not be the best life, but you granted me life. You know what? If it wasn't for the goodness of, of God, Job might have died before them kids was grown. Right? If it wasn't for the goodness of God, he never had all those stocks that went away to start with, right? right. He would have never owned them, except for the goodness of God. So after complaining and moaning and fussing, he comes back to the thought, my God has been good to me. My God is in control. My God has sustained me when nothing else would. My God has been so good to me. Thou hast granted me life and favor and thy visitation have preserved my spirit. Now, the last part, he says he was preserved. Now, he, he had fussed for 11 verses, right? And now he says, you preserved me. I'm still alive. My friends are beating me up with their words. All my children are dead. My wife is a rebel. But you preserved me. In the middle of this, I'm still alive. In the middle of this, I can still go to God. I can still pray. I can still have fellowship with the Almighty in the midst of my life falling apart. And he reminds himself of the goodness of God. You know, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. Now, at the end of Job, we all know, and that's the other Part. You always hear sermons from the beginning of Job and the end of Job, but you never hear sermon, very many sermons about the middle of Job. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. But that discourse that God gives Job at the beginning of the end, so to speak, and we know at the end he was, he was blessed with ten more children. All his goods were restored to him. In fact, it says that he was richer than before. But just... Uh, just at the beginning of that, God says, who are you to question me? Right? No. And you know the only answer that we can have to that, I can't question you. You get some bad news tomorrow, what's God about it? I don't know why it's happened. But you get by yourself, and you know what? It's okay to grieve. But you get by yourself, and you get right with the Lord, and you accept it, and you'll be a testimony to others. Mm -hmm. You know what I've found, and those of you that have lost your mothers already, at certain times of the year, you miss them more than others. And I've really been thinking about mom. And sometimes I just wish I could pick up the phone and say, hey mom, how's everything down at Coma City? But you know what? As much as I would like that, she went exactly when she was supposed to. Sure. It's not for me to question it. Do I miss her? Sure. Do you have to make adjustments in your life? Absolutely. But I know that God did it for not just mother's good. He did it for my good, too. You see, that's when you're in the right spot with Jesus.